we had a topic today we were just talking about how um people should start businesses what is the best time to really get involved in your own business what is the best time to get that thing that you've been dreaming of and for that purpose i brought in not people who have had it we had a couple of people who are have <clears throat> who are millionaires in their own rights i brought one i brought a uh, couple of them but i also brought people in cameroon who are starters in that space because our objective is to see how we can basically put a, an arm around those people in cameroon those young people who are trying to do it how do we help them and we had some incredible messages we had a man over here who talked about his own uh, activity from where he started and where he is right now and we are and then we had Charles also who works with me extensively and um, we are trying to see how we can help these people <clears throat> how as a community we can work back and forth to basically build something within our community to get these people to where they want to go without breaking our wallets without killing ourselves but we have access to something they don't have we have access to capital in this country we can we can build something out of what is out there so that is really what we're talking about a man who brought us a lot of issues that they're having on the ground and i was and i just i was just bringing minds i just want you guys with all your mindsets what you teach on your different platforms what are those things those little things that we can put together help these guys to because one of the key things in cameroon we have very vibrant young people in cameroon but the other problem we have in cameroon is that young people in cameroon want to make it quickly and then it becomes a problem because they want they don't want to build a platform that is wealthy they want to build the riches for now and rich is not wealth rich doesn't it's nothing compared to wealth when you see a rich man you see a young man who is who just had money he's a quick money he just made money last night and he wants to make everything happen but when you see a wealthy man a wealthy man is that guy who is already in the fox news magazine he doesn't need to do some of the things that we are struggling striving to do buy your Louis Vuitton bag do all these things that are that are called consumer items yes so my thing is i want just to bring your minds together let's talk about this emma has brought all the challenges they have capital cap taxes getting access to talent and yet so basically that's why i bring you in if you have any comment the comments on there because um, i know you, you you talk a lot about these things yeah my big thing thank you for the for, for the invite my big thing is always around mindset i don't know if that's something that has been discussed within the the forum already has absolutely. mindset been covered absolutely you you talk about it so my big thing is my my big thing is mindset um the first thing is if you believe that people who are wealthy are evil or if we've grown to believe that money is evil or the love of money is the root of all evil then how are you trying to build wealth when you believe that wealth is evil it's about having that switch in mindset because if you're believing that wealth is evil and you're trying to get it it's not going to come to you so there's that mindset you have to first switch to say hey maybe a lot of the things that i have been taught maybe they are lies you have to be willing to challenge the things that you have grown to believe ask yourself why you believe those things and then ask yourself like all of those people who are making it out there what is it that they have that i don't have you've got everything that they have that you have everything that they have except of course maybe access to the capital but it's not the capital that is the place to begin it's taking those ideas that you have believing that those ideas you have are worth something and starting to implement those ideas i think it's um emmanuel i think you were the one who was talking about this before you started your youtube channel from nothing it doesn't cost a dime to start a youtube channel it's just about believing that your message is important it's about believing that you have something to offer and you don't sit and you wait for somebody to come and rescue you and save you you might be waiting for the government or you might be saying oh country don't spoil 
we can't do anything because the government has done this. We can't do anything because we come from this underprivileged place. No. If that is what you believe, then you will not even make the effort to start to do the things that you know that you're capable of because you already believe that the game is rigged and you cannot succeed no matter how you try. So you have to, first of all, switch your mindset and believe that, you know what? I have something to offer. What I have is valuable. Maybe the people I'm offering it to are not the people who need it, but there are people out there who would benefit from whatever it is that I am teaching. And it's about finding those people, but believing enough that what you have is valuable and the people who need it are out there and they are going to come get it. But you have to, like Manon had said before, be consistent, believe in the thing that you want to do, put it out there, be consistent in it, consistency, consistency. If you don't believe in your own thing, then nobody's going to believe in it. So first of all, you have to have that conviction, that belief that this thing that I'm trying to offer, there are people who need it. Maybe they are not responding to it right now because I've not put it in front of the right people. But if you continue to do it and you're consistent about doing it, then you can make it. Don't wait on capital. Yes, capital is important, but that's not the beginning. The beginning is you taking action on the little things that you can take action on. Absolutely. I think, Emma, you think, I, I see you as a community builder. And if you take from what um, Ida just said, mindset is everything. It is really the core. And that is why uh, at times I usually think that the our the 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 the, 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 the our the way our our ancestors or not our ancestors the, the the colonialists the imperialists the first thing they did to us was to completely brainwash us completely yep. because this, this whole ice aspect of saying that the beginning of evil is money was what we became what we became with. We decided to give them everything that we had, which they wanted. They get access, they got access to all our wealth because of that particular phrase. They made us to understand that we shouldn't worry about those things. So it is a complete radical change of our mindsets. And that begins, it even begins in our churches. Yes. It even begins in our churches where we change that mindset where we've been completely turned around and then someone else is making all the gold out of us because of a mindset so i, I want to thank you for that emma you are a community leader you what you have started we can support that initiative to be built we are already working together but we need to be able to see that clearly and see how we can work to do that. Because the most important thing you can do in Cameroon, I see so many people, I, I was talking about Eric Tato. Eric Tato is somebody, um, he is very controversial in many things, but from a financial perspective, I am a financial person. When I listen, I listen to some of his videos, and I get excited about the type of things he's building. The way he's building it, and his understanding of the way things work in this country. Once you understand the way things work, and if you happen to be in the right place where you have access to some of these things, you can do anything, practically anything. And now he has gone, he's trying to create a school where he's mentoring people on things like that. And I, and I'm, and I love that. I love that. Because that's what I think. As much as people understand, first of all, change their mindsets, and then focus on wealth building rather than on getting riches. Because how do you focus on wealth building? You take time to build your asset base, not focusing on income, not just the money that you're making now. That money will help build your income, but build your asset base. When you build that asset base, you have access to the money that you need. The money that you're making, every dime that you're making should be used to build your asset base. And when you get support like a platform like this where you have people like Charles who comes with a lot of experience, Ida has incredible platform where she teaches about the, where she talks about teaches about these things all the time. I spend my time doing these things all the time and we work together to do these things. I mean, if we could bring a community together where people who can bring value in different areas of their 
uh, of their trade could come together and then uh, talk to maybe get that platform where we could make our people, because we are the community leaders. We are the community leaders. To change that mindset, it comes from us. And I want right to just now? add something. Yes. Mm -hmm. I want to just add yeah. something there, which still come, comes down to, to, the, to the mindset thing. Sometimes, just like you said, we're looking at a quick money and we forget to realize that our relationships or the relationships that we're able to build could be more valuable than the quick cash that you're going to make. And I want to give an example here. A, a couple of months ago, somebody who is very influential in the Western world here was doing, I collaborated with him on something. And here's a request that he made of me. He says, I want you to go on TikTok and find people who have a million plus followers. A million, if you have a million plus followers on TikTok, it means that you have a community, you have a base, you have mastered something that people are trying to understand. Yes. Because people right here in the Western world understand that having that community, having the people, having that base, it's, it's, it's one way that you can actually, say for example, you have a million people following you. Power. And Yes, if you have a million people who follow you, those that million people listen to you because there's something valuable that you say. Let's say you actually have a, a real product to sell. And even if that product is only $1, but all of those 1 million people buy the product, you have $1 million. Absolutely. And so this, this, this person who's a very influential person out here in the Western world said to me, says, Ida, go find me people who have a million plus followers on TikTok. I want to interview them for my channel my YouTube channel, and that YouTube channel has had the likes of people like Tony Robbins. It's had the likes of people of, think of anybody who's influential out here. Those people have been on that YouTube channel as guests. The only the qualification to get on that particular platform that we're talking about was that you have a million plus followers. Yeah. So here's the thing. I said, this is my opportunity to reach out to the Africans out there to give, give them a platform to get expose their products, their talents, and whatever to the West. When I was going on the platform to find people who are a million plus, I said, I'm going to find Africans first. I found a lot of Africans. I reached out to a lot of them. For the few people who responded, they said, what are you going to pay me? I can't come and talk to, on somebody's channel for free. I'm like, are you kidding me? They're bringing you to a platform that, three million, that has 3 million plus followers for you to come and share your message. Yes. Come and share your message. And you're asking me how much I'm going to pay you to come to that platform. It's like, yeah, you know, some of us who are in Africa like that, the only way we make money is from the deals, the brand deals that we can get. So if you're not paying me, I'm sorry, I can't come on the platform. Like, okay. You see why I'm, ta you see why I'm talking about the mindset? The th thing I could give to you, I'm not going to take money. If you call me from Cameroon and say, either send me money, I will not give. But if you say, either teach me how to do something, I will say, come, <laughs> let me teach you. Because they say, you give a man a fish, right? You make him a beggar. You teach a man how to fish. You turn him into a productive person. Yeah. I can give you a platform where you can, once you're on that platform now, it's a matter of sharing your message. This is your opportunity to shine. But no, you're looking for the small $100 that they can give you in order for you to come and spread your message. That is the problem with, 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 with some people in our community. That is the mindset thing. You're thinking about the now. You're not looking about, hey, this is a huge opportunity for me to get my name out there. And who knows where this relationship that we're building can, can end up. Mindset. That's incredible. Uh -uh. Yeah, let, let, let's interrupt. Let's, I was laughing the whole time because when... Emma raised this same issue. <laughs> Ida wasn't there. <laughs> yes. 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 Because Ida, uh, before you came in, Emma talked about how he's looking for people around his environment in, in Cameroon. And before he starts, before he finishes the sentence, the question is, how much are you going to pay me? <laughs> without, without, he's not even understood what the whole works is. He has not had it. He thought about long-term goals not that about where can this thing take me to it started by how much can you pay me yes. so and, and i have a similar story in the sense that i made a comment to them, my community here that look the last time i went to cameroon you sent a boy a small boy is five six seven go and buy me some sugar how much does sugar cost the what that guy starts thinking about immediately is okay this guy will give me a thousand francs 
that sugar is actually 500. Let me tell him that it's 750. He's already made a calculation how he's going to trick you out of cheat you or something. Mindset. <laughs> yeah. And I'm glad that uh, Charles talked about the fact that we need to, it was all colonial. We need to redo it. Absolutely. Yes. Sorry, I had to yeah. interrupt. I couldn't, I couldn't hold it. <laughs> You're very yeah. right. And, and, and I like the fact, yet, yeah, no, Emmanuel, go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, so no, I, I have a question. I wanted to ask a question because we are talking about um, we are talking about when is the best time to leave your nine to five and start your own business. So the question I wanted to ask is, when you eventually start the business, like when at what point do you realize that this business is not working? Maybe I should shut it down, or maybe it's, um, do like pivot and just stop and maybe do something else like because that is a big challenge for a lot of people in our community you know sometimes some people start businesses and after five years it's still not working and they are they are in this dilemma of should i continue this should i should i keep being consistent at this or should i just shut everything and do something else so at one point at what point as a business owner do you know that okay this is not working this business model is not working we need to do something else because that's a big problem see okay. the, uh, yes go ahead. The, the, go there's ahead. something yes there's something right we sometimes we start businesses because we've seen other people starting that business and so we yes. jump into the business to go and do it if you want to start a business you better be sure that you are passionate about it you better be sure that you're solving an actual problem if you know you're solving an actual problem and you have the passion that business will work so if yes. your business is not solving an actual problem shut it down but if your business is solving an actual problem think about what have i not done why is this business not yet working who out there has had a similar problem and how did they solve it? What can I learn from them to implement in my own? So filter it, pass it through the filter of, is my business solving a problem? And am I willing to go an extra, extra, extra mile to make sure that this problem is being solved? Let me give an example. What I do, right, I do financial education. I do, like in the broad sense of it is financial education. My background is in accounting. But the thing that I'm trying to solve for most people is this thing of, we're out here in the Western world. A lot of people get out here into the Western world and they immediately get into credit card debt. They immediately get into, because they're trying, they're trying to live a lifestyle that their pockets cannot sustain. They're trying to be flashy because they look around, it's like, okay, you want to have the, you want to drive the best car. You want to live in the best house. Consumer products, you, you want those things. And so you get into a state which is like, you're in over your head. Head, right i know that financial education is a problem because when i look around i see people who are living far below what they are capable of they're living far below what they are capable of they are not even tapping into their own potential there are people who have skills talents there are people who have businesses in them but because they are in a financial mess they cannot free themselves to start to start to start that their side hustle so I understand that there is a problem that I am able to solve. Are people always coming to me? No. Why are they not coming? So those are the questions that I start asking. Why are people not coming? There is the shame. There is maybe my message doesn't resonate with them. Maybe there is something that I need to do to, to change it. Should I stop doing it because people are not coming to me? No, that problem still exists and I can solve it. But if, if, you, you, if, you, if your, your business is not solving a problem, and it's not looking like it's starting to make you money. I think that's a filter through which you just need to say, okay, you know what? It's time to, to move on to something else. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I think, I think you nailed it. But uh, in addition to that, I think the biggest problem to getting to where you're, what you're saying is that we go back to that aspect of mindset. We are too cheap in the way we want to do things we want to make a million out of a dime there's a price to building your business every, every business you have there's a price to building it the price is not only money it could be effort 
It could be anything. There's a price. You have to forego something to get there. We don't invest enough, enough in our businesses. We don't educate ourselves enough. We have a product that we can sell. It is sellable. But we just believe that it's going to happen. It doesn't just happen. It doesn't. Unless you are really... God, God, maybe God is just on top of you, then it's going to happen. But 99% of the time, it is your effort that's going to make it happen. And that effort is what we are not ready to put in there. We are not ready to educate ourselves on what we're doing. And we think that what we're doing is the best. We don't want to think. That is why many people talk about getting a business plan. When you do a business plan in any business, the, the, the quadrants in a business plan make you think beyond your sphere. Every part of a business plan makes you think. And that's why when people come to me for a business plan, they just come and say, ah, Mr. Andrea, I need you to make me a business plan. People call me. There's lots of people who call me about business plans. But they are not ready to invest a dime of the time that it takes to make a business plan. A business plan is not just taking numbers and putting there and making things. Most of us, we think that a business plan is just making projections. And then, this is, and then you're not even ready for that. The business plan has something that you call a marketing plan. You have to do research to understand the market. You have to re do research to understand even your economics around you. If you are making a, doing a business that is not working and you have determined that you are solving a problem, then you have to go back to the drawing board and look at the elements of a business plan and then start looking at them one by one. What is my financial goal? Maybe you're using, you're spending too much out of your business. You want to look at that. Maybe your market, you're not targeting the right market. Maybe you're not investing enough in that market. All the maybes around the business plan, you have to look at them individually. And if you look at them, you will see that as long as you're solving a problem, you don't have you do have a filter somewhere that is making you lose something just because you've not met those tenants that are on there that you were supposed to make. If you do that, your business is going to be sustained. But first of all, determine. The only way you will determine that you're solving a problem is because somebody is coming to buy. Somebody is coming to, to pay for that, that problem. Otherwise, there's a problem. You might, maybe you're thinking that you're solving a problem, but actually nobody it means that nobody sees the problem in this. The only way is because there's a fair market. There's a fair person there. When they say fair market value, it is the price that someone is willing to pay for what you're giving. If you think that your, sell, your price is $20 and nobody is willing to give you $1, then you're not, you, you, you're not even in the game. So those are the elements I think Many people will come to us and say, business plan is one of the most difficult things to do. People don't, just don't understand that. Because it, is, it, is, it has a big thought process through it. And then when you make a business plan, if, you see, if I see somebody with a business plan that he has had, okay, I had it for two years, or this, a business plan is a working document. It is very flexible. As you're moving, you're tweaking it. With actual reality, you're tweaking it. Because you find bumps on the road. You did it on the basis of a plan. Now you're actually investing in that plan. So you want to see, you want to see, you want to adjust those things and make sure. And if you're adjusting something and you see you cannot meet it, let it go. Let it go. Yeah. Let me add two those things to that. Thing. Yes. Let, let me add two things to that. So I think the most important thing about making a business succeed is not even the quality of the product. Yes. It, it is, it is an, a hungry market. Because think about the person who, even if, you, if your business is, is your roasting pork, for example, by the street, and even if it doesn't taste nice at all, but if you take that pork business and put it beside a bar, that business will sell. Because there are people there who want to eat pork. Yes. The person, the, somebody could have the best tasting hot dogs and bringing it back to the site. 
so the, the best tasting hot dogs, but they are selling that in front of a restaurant. It's not going to sell. But take that to a football field where people are hungry after the game. You will sell. So it's about identifying who is my market. That's the first thing. Yes. The second thing is yeah, identify your market and make sure you go where your market is. The second thing is we have to remember to continue to learn. For most of us in Africa, in, or in the African community, and this is not everybody, there are exceptions everywhere, but for the vast majority, once we finish our schooling, I mean, we go to bachelor's, master's, PhD, and we keep going with double master's, triple master's, quadruple PhD. But when that education is finished, for us, it's finished. It's like education ends in the classroom. Absolutely. But when you look in the Western world, Look at the millionaires and the billionaires, and most of them are going to boast to you that I only have a high school. I never went to university. But they are smart. Why? Because they continue to learn. They know that, you know what, in order for me to, to become the best version of myself, I have to continue to invest in myself. I, and and, and this, this investing in yourself is very simple. There are people who are going to take their life. People, okay, think, for example, Warren Buffett. You cannot pay to go and sit with Warren Buffett for him to teach you something. You don't have the money to pay Warren Buffett. But Warren Buffett has a book. His years of experience is summarized in a book that you can buy for less than $30. And you're going to learn how many years of knowledge from the best of the best by reading one book. You tap into his mind. Think about whoever it is that you admire out there. They probably have a book. Buying their book book $20 $30 that's all it's going to cost you but it's going to give you an insight into how does this person think how did this person start their business and one thing which we believe which is completely a lie is that wealthy people are selfish with knowledge no on the contrary they are willing to teach they are looking for people who will learn but they don't want to waste their time their best asset is their time so if somebody is going to sit with you to tell you something the best way you can pay them back is to go back and implement what they have taught you. But our Absolutely. people don't want that. A lot of our people don't want that. So learning, in your, find your market. Number two, learn, continue to learn. Ask people, how many books have you read? No, they don't read. Why? No. You, you understand? Why am I going to go pay for a book? It's so that you can get something, you can learn something from somebody who has done something and has accomplished something and has put all of that knowledge into a book. It gives you an insight into things you don't know no matter what book you pick no matter how dumb the book might seem you will learn one thing from insight one and that's additional knowledge that you will not get in school and then for those of us who even do not want to read we have all these things for you to just hear just listen to them mm -hmm. listen to these people they have podcasts they have everything we don't do them we just sit and then we expect them to happen. It's not going to happen. Let me tell you, the best people here, they pay a lot. I mean, I don't want to talk about myself. I learn a lot. If I tell you how much I invest in education, just be able. I tell people when they come to, to oh, I want to do tax planning, blah, blah, blah. You come and do, I want you to help me with my tax strategy and stuff like that. Those things, you cannot have a, 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 a tax preparer. You want you come to pay a tax strategist as a tax preparer, you will not get it. You will not get it. There's a price behind it. There's a there's a whole machine behind behind doing those things. There's a system that you use to make those things happen, and you pay for those systems. You pay for those uh, for those educational platforms every day something happens i see it it comes on my platform because you are in a system where you are paying significant amounts of money to be able to those things financial education financial literacy is not taught in any school there's no school for it it is through people's experiences it is through people's researches it is through people's uh, i mean people ha people have become creative there's no way in the task, there's no way in the tax code where they tell you about how to strategize this and do this, do this to avoid these taxes. It doesn't exist. It doesn't. But now you have to be creative and look for those places where those things exist. And then you say, oh, so is this market, in this market, I can do A, B, C, D. There is a price to everything. We are not just ready. 
to pay our prices, to pay the price to where we want to go. And if you don't do it, you will go from one thing to the other thing to the third thing, whereas you could have stayed in your in your in that in that thing, and just learn those things around that thing that you don't know. We claim to know everything, whereas we don't even research to know more. Yeah. Our mindset, we have been brainwashed. We need to go back to the drawing board and wash our brains back to where they were. But we have a problem. The problem we have to start with our influencers. People who are influencers have to work on bringing our minds back. <laughs> yes. That's true. All yes. those people so, so, that... who are behind, yes, they have to help us. Mm -hmm. They have been, <laughs> I mean, they have to help us. But at times they too have been brainwashed. So they just stay there and then keep pushing it into our heads, into our mindset. And then we are made not to think anymore. Just to be in a, to, to belong, you have to unthink and then become just that guy who's seated there. And that's why we see all, all sorts of nonsense happening within our community. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to give the others a chance to talk yeah. and then I have something to add about yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I wanted to ask, you, you asked the question to know at what point do you make that determination that this is not working <clears throat> and uh, I, I either have to pivot or have to stop. And that's where I think uh, the business plan comes in. The one thing that a business plan would do, a good business plan that is, it would provide the opportunity to take some data. Because if you don't have data, if you cannot measure, things that you cannot measure, you can't change. And it's, it's cannot change in a rational manner. Right? So if you're not measuring your, if you don't have data that you're measuring consistently, you won't be able to see the trends. And if you don't see those trends, you won't ask the right questions. Because the why, why is this thing failing, only happens, the answer to the why only happens after you've asked the question. But if you don't have the right data, if you're not keeping data, you might not even notice that since this is my business, is a side hustle, as a matter of fact, most of my pay is going to fit that side hustle. If you don't know what happens to your monies, right you will not realize that this 1000 francs that i have now where did it come from did it come from the business or did it come from my salary if it came from the business what part of the business did it come from did it come from the youtube section or did it come from uh the youtube section in terms of youtube paid me for 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 number of number of followers or did it come because I sold it to someone? So you don't know in which direction to go. So data, something that uh, we in the Agile community, in the management community, we like to encourage our teams. Well, sorry, I'm, I'm falling back on that now. But if you don't keep data, you won't know what to change. And that's where a business plan comes in because I think a good business plan would at least, we would tell what data to keep. Yeah. That's what I think, I think I can add, uh, given all the brilliant things that have, have, been, have been talked about just now. Yes. Uh, Ida, you wanted to say something. I wanted to add something, but finish what you're saying, then I'll say something. So you, you said something about our influencers have to have to do the work. You know what? There is there is something. I consider myself an influencer. To an extent, I have like 15,000 people following me on TikTok, but that's it. You are. <laughs> but, <laughs> And here is the truth, right? And and I know you've had this experience because you also put out a lot of content, uh, Jaya Grafre. You also put out a lot of content out there. But how many people actually come to look at that content, learn from it, appreciate it, tell you that, hey, I learned something from this and stuff like that? It doesn't happen. But look at the content creators who are out there sharing gossip. Yes. Those would, you want to look exactly. on a Facebook Live exactly. and you see like a thousand people are watching and what are they talking about? They're talking about uh, something that my neighbor did this, my neighbor did that. Yeah. So here is the thing, right? It's it's a thing that we as we have to ask ourselves those questions and decide which direction we're going, because the algorithm in all of the systems, the rest, the the they pay you for the views, the watch time, and stuff like that. And so if an influencer knows that if I come and I say nonsense right here, it's gonna get more people to stay right there and watch and I make more money from it what incentive do they have then to go and share the good stuff 
which is not which nobody is going to watch which you understand so there is that part of it which i think we need to question ourselves about like okay why do we do what we do and understand that there is a bigger purpose there's a bigger reason why we're doing this we're building a long-term brand and not just looking for the eyeballs that are going to be paying us so there's balancing there's, there's that thing you have to balance between okay am i chasing the money or am i chasing my brand yes. for some people their brand is kongosa mm -hmm. but for the vast majority of influencers no the, the vast for the minority of influencers who can actually make that change their brand is education and unfortunately our people don't like education yes no, they don't they don't absolutely absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> um they so they, they, they've not been they've, they've been I want to be on that. I want to. I want to defend them <laughs> because uh, if I don't, if I don't approach it from the pers from this my perspective, they will not be motivated to try to change that mindset. Mm -hmm. That mindset has actually been worked on and and engineered to get to where it is right now, and and it's continually being nurtured. Mm -hmm. I happen to be the. I think, let me see. Yeah, I think I'm the oldest on this platform right now. So I happen to have seen that change from because in the. By the 60s, I was already, by 72, when the referendum in Cameroon happened, I was in secondary school and I saw it happen. And I, I saw the change in the community to where we are today, to the point where you can't trust your 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 your, 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 your junior brother. You can't, you can't even trust your son that if I give him a thousand francs, 500 francs to go buy a, 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 a packet of sugar, that is going to bring me the right change. That's where we are today, right? Mm -hmm. But we are coming from a point where pre-1972, you could, it would be a scandal for you to even think that if your son or your your your, your person even had that, that thought that you didn't trust him or her, he would, he would just, I mean, you would be crying the whole day, right? How do we get to that point? It's, it was it's properly engineered. They broke down the system. I don't want to tell about who they are, but you know what I'm talking about. They broke down the system and it was systematic. It was not. It wasn't random. No, it was a. It was. A, it followed a plan. Yes, absolutely. Right, and they got us to where we are. So that's why I want to defend by saying that it's not that we are born like mm -hmm. that. It's not in our DNA. We've just been educated just been just changed our character to that point since it's something that we're not born like that so we can re we can unlearn and relearn that's the challenge that these four of us sitting here now for example this subset of that kind of mindset that's the, that's the challenge that we have yeah but the good news is that it's doable the good news is that it's doable so the fact that we spent four hours here talking about this thing we could have been worrying about a certain uh, uh, trois somewhere, or worry about the next party. Gives us that hope that this thing can happen. And if we if we're on this, if we're at the point of losing faith and losing hope, no, this is this is evident right here that that can happen, right? Yeah. You you both young people, Ida and Emma, who are younger younger people, that that's what get the next to realize that hey, man, this thing is doable. Yeah. Yeah. And you're right. You're right, right? Because the, the feedback that I get from, especially from my TikTok, the feedback that I get from people who come to watch my videos, they say, they say like, there's nobody out there doing what you're doing. They say, thank you. They say, we've heard the things before, but we've never heard it from, from a person like you. So for example, what, what I do out there, because I'm based in Canada, Montreal, Canada. And when I came here, I didn't have the person who would teach me what the credit system is, how it works and stuff. And so before I knew it, I got myself into $60,000 of debt between credit cards and cars and stuff. $60,000, right? And when, when you, like you said, what you don't track, you don't. What you don't track, you, you don't manage and like stuff like that. It was from the moment that you can't, we you tracked can't change. it. You can't change. From the moment that we tracked it, I said, you know what? We make a lot of money. We make too much money to be living paycheck to paycheck. We make too much money to be living broke. What is going on? And so because we asked that question of ourselves, we started to look to say, okay, this is actually what is happening. And if you continue to go exactly in this way, this is the direction you're going to be, or this is where you're going to end up. And so something had to change. And so because we made that, we 
had that uh, self self evaluation and we changed that within a two year period we paid off all of that debt sixty thousand dollars plus and right now what i do on my social media platforms is i go there and i'm educating people i say hey this is how you can get into that mess this is what you should do if you're in the mess this is how you should get out and then I, I kind of bring people information that is available out there to the like on the government websites it's like maybe there's this credit that's available to you maybe things like that and in all of it i bring in the mindset aspect how you can change yourself like if you want to earn more at your work it's not about going to request a pay raise it's about improving the value that you bring to the company so you bring so, to your work, yeah. yes exactly so those kind of things so there are a few people who would actually okay, good. there are a few people who actually come out to say hey you know what we really appreciate the thing you're doing thank you for teaching us thank you for taking your time to do this and again i'm not doing it for the glory i'm doing it because i know i could change people's lives but having people acknowledge it actually lets you know that people are seeing the message message you are impacting the lives that you set out to impact and so i think just having if we see something that is good, if we see something that somebody in the community, not only the community, but anyway, if we see something which is good, I think we should be faster at sharing those things and encouraging those things and less about the things that are like, so for example, we hear now some, some gossip somewhere. It's going to go to all WhatsApp forums as fast as possible. Yes. But a good piece of content is going to go to very few. And so I think that is the challenge that comes down to number one. We ourselves, the creators, or ourselves, the people who let me use the word influencers, can positively impact the community, is to continue to do that, to adapt to the technology. Because right now, there are certain technologies that allow for you to get your message out there faster. We need to get ourselves to the place where we can also leverage those technologies and put ourselves in the position where our messages get out to more people, the people who need it, get ourselves in front of the market that needs us the most. So it's a question of where are the Cameroonian people, the people we're trying to help, where are they? How can we get our message in a way that is that they are receptive to because we know what we're trying to do. Now it's about why are they not getting my message? And we have to change something, tweak our messages in a way that they can get it so that we can reach the people we're trying to reach. Because those people who are spreading the false or the negative information, they have mastered something that us, that we need to master. And so it's like, what do we need to change? What do we have to do in order to get this message to more people who need it? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I, I, I just sit here and I'm amazed with what you guys are saying. And imagine just to answer your question, that if you, the, the, the number one thing that you need in any business is a market. If you don't have a market, there's no business. Forget it. If you don't have a market, there's no business. But if there's the market, then you can do, you can fix everything around it to get to where you want to go that's the most important thing so if you that's why in cameroon they talk of something called etat de lieu etat de lieu means you come and revisit your situation right once you revisit your situation it's all about determining that is there a market for my product once you have determined that there is a market for your product, and at times, for some very critical markets, you may still be in that space where people are not still receptive to it. We are going to that market where things are becoming, you are pissed. There are people, the, the richest people in this world are people who have created things and made people, pull people towards it. Elon Musk the reason they are saying he's moving like this is because he's a pace setter. He, he pulls people in a direction where you don't even realize that you were supposed to go there. And then all of a sudden, everybody realizes that, wow, this is a new world. And then everybody wants to go there. And that's why he becomes the richest person. Tesla was selling for far above its value. Just because when people realize, when it started, nobody even realized where the guy was going. But he was doing a lot of things because he was not in like the normal you and I who are going in a market where we are testing the existing market. He was looking at the futuristic market. And he was like a pace setter, pulling people towards that. And what you do with that, what you do with that is 
you are convinced first of what you're doing. That's not, not our common market in Cameroon where people are doing small businesses, right? Yeah. So when you're convinced about what now he's doing with SpaceX, he's going to the he's going to the space and doing all sorts of crazy things. Everybody's like, wow, they are saying wow. But people are now, most people are buying into SpaceX because they know the person. They know his creativity. They know what he's doing as a generational shifter. He's somebody who is shifting people to different generations. So people want to buy into him because he's already succeeded. He has history from, from Tesla. People thought Tesla could fly. At some point, people were just buying the cost, the, 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 um, the, the share price of Tesla just kept going like crazy. Because at some point, people thought Tesla could even fly. So they were not in that market where they were like any other market, where there's General Motors, Mercedes, all these other motor cars. People were just buying because some people even came about saying that Tesla is not a car. Tesla is a there is a set of data. We're selling data into the future. So people were just buying. And that's why when they said he lost over a, a hundred billion dollars in one year, it's because at some point reality sets in that people start realizing, and he was the one who started that. Because what did he do? He, when he starts selling his own shares inside something that is his own vision, what do you do? You're like, huh? This guy is <laughs> everybody goes and tries to sell to that. If he's selling, it means that he's seeing something that we are not seeing. Yeah. And that's not the reason of the plunge. Because the market, how does the market operate? Expectations. If the leader of the market is selling his own shares, he wanted to buy ticket, he wanted to buy whatsoever. Um what do you call it? Twitter. Yeah. And for him to buy Twitter. He needs some cash, so he went and sold some of his stock in Tesla, and everybody's like, wow. Everybody starts selling, and that's the, it plunges. So the whole idea is, if you don't have a market, because first of all, are you a pace setter? If you're not a pace setter, then go in a market that already exists. And then you determine that that market exists. As long as the market exists for your product, it means that there's something you're doing wrong. Either you're not packaging well, Either you're not selling at the right price, either you're not located at the right location, either you're, you put all those things together. If you take, if you take pork and you're selling it behind a restaurant, nobody will buy it, just like uh, uh, Ida was saying. But if you take it besides, you take your pork, you go with it to um, Kondongo in, in Cameroon, in, in, in those places where there's beer, Everybody will buy it because that's some pepper. You put pepper there, everybody wants to buy it. Yeah. So those are the things to do. Determine that there's a market. If there's a market, then there's a then there's a then there's business for you. You just need to do the other things. Let me let me add something to that. So sometimes if if you're not that pace it pace setter, you can still come in an existing market and change the way that the thing is being delivered. And let me give an example. Puff puff, we know Benny, empty puff puff that we walk around and fry. Everybody does mommy put and they share the selling. There is a guy in America. I'm sure you, you guys have seen him on, on, on social media. He's, he fries puff puff and he sells. But he's not waiting for people to come and buy puff puff. He, when you have an occasion, he brings his stuff and he's frying puff puff on the spot. So just like, like we do barbecue everywhere. This guy is doing puff puff on the spot. Everywhere. Yeah, you, you know the guy? Mr. Yes. Puff puff. Mr. Puff puff. Exactly. Absolutely. So it's a matter of finding something that is existing as well and make it better. Yes. I, I, don't, I don't know. Like sometimes we are so resistant to change as well. So this is for my friends out there who are in Cameroon. You guys are inventors. Invent something. From the time I was born right up to now, we're pounding at you with the stick and hitting like that. Do we mean yes. to say there is no way we can improve that actual and create something and that we can grind? Make it industrial. Make it industrial. I have yes. a friend who, our African dishes that are out there in Cameroon, we love them. But right here in the Western world, sometimes it's very hard to have them. Or sometimes when you have them, you don't have the time to make it in the same way. Ekwang is something that people like. But for the Love of me, I will not go and find a greater in this Canada and greater cocoa. 
It's not because I don't want it. It's because number one, I don't have the time between between parenting and and everything else and your job and everything. You don't have the time to go and buy cocoa and come and greater and do that. But if it was available, I would buy it. I have a friend who what she has done is she's created a company in Cameroon. She's employing people in Cameroon. They are, are sourcing cocoa yam from mummies and papas in the villages and they are taking that cocoa yam and they are processing it and they are packaging the ekwang so it's pre-wrapped ekwang they're packaging it and they're shipping all across the world it's here in canada it's in america it's in europe from what from ekwang people like it but people don't want to make it how can you take something that is existing and make it better yes. people go to cameroon all the time we want to come back here we're buying Aero, crayfish, we're buying this and that. Well, we put it in our bags. By the time we come here, it's smelling. It's sm everything is smelling. We love the food, but we don't want the smell. There are people who are now taking those same things and bottling them. And when we go to Cameroon, we want to travel back. We just go quickly to say, hey, or, or somebody is like, hey, I have a friend who's traveling. Can you send me X, Y, Z? You go to somebody who has already packaged that thing and you sell. The price I will go and pay for it in the market is far lower than what I will pay you for you having already bought with it. But you have added value to it. You took something that is existing in an existing market and you made it better. So we have to challenge ourselves. I know, again, you have, you have to go against the norm, right? Because if you go to the heart of the village, I'm from Quen, Achu is our traditional meal. If you go to the heart of the village and you become the person who wants to change the way they pound Achu, everybody will be against you. Hey, tradition, hey, country fashion. Because we are stuck in a way, because, and it's not everybody, but you have to believe that this thing you're doing is right. This thing you're doing is for the advancement of the community, of the culture. You're being productive. You're creating something. If you go and be the person to create, I don't know what, an Achu factory, and all of a sudden, Bamenda is exporting Achu to the rest of the world in whatever shape, for I don't know how it's going to be made, but it can be done. All of our traditional meals, Nigeria, the Nigerians are buying things all the time. Southwest province has fertile soils. We don't want to do agriculture, but agriculture is the thing that keeps the world going. Everybody needs to eat. What can we do with those, our products, those, our things that we are naturally blessed with? How can we innovate the thing? Take something that is existing, make it better. The market is there. But everybody wants to have a job sitting in an office doing something. No. And again, in our communities, we have been trained to believe that general education is the thing. Thinking back to when we went to school, the people who went to technical education were looked upon as the dull people. And everybody had to go to school to go and do medicine, go and do have five papers, advanced level, 11 papers, O level. And the people who went to technical school were looked upon as the dull ones. But no, those are the cre creators. We have to encourage people to be able to use their natural skills and talents to create the things that they can create. There's a lot of talent in Cameroon. There's a lot of talent. But now the people who are aware of things like this have to then create those environments where you're educating people to see the possibility. Because I cannot think of all the ideas. Nobody on this forum can think of all the ideas. But if we go to a place and we talk to people, you would see a child out there who has an idea and is going to be like, hey, this thing that this person has said has inspired me. I can now go and use that my idea and make something. And don't be afraid to fail. Failure is when you fail, you learn. Fail and learn, fail and learn. But as you fail and you learn, then you're going to improve. I think there's a lot out there. We just, we just are, are sitting to say, oh, the government has spoiled the country. Um, I don't have money. I don't have this. No. Buy a seed. Go and plant cassava. Invent something that you're going to do with Gary or make something new. I'm, 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 I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot that can be done. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Mindset again. Mindset. Let me let me defend let me let me defend our people. <laughs> <laughs> because if we don't if I if you don't if I don't bring this out, you will not realize that, oh this problem can be solved and this is where you need to tackle that. Yes. There used to be a time those seventy early eight early yeah early seventies mid seventies where if a community primary school they did a let me use the real term. A latrine, you know, you know what they would cool. do. The chief would just send out the message that this school needs a latrine, and we'll go there and we'll start digging that latrine the following day. 
and by the end of the week, that latrine is ready. Okay. You know what happens now? Yes. When the school needs a latrine, they will tell the chief. Okay. And the chief will tell the, the, the sub deal. And the sub deal will tell the deal. And the deal will write a letter to the governor. Then the governor will approve it, then send it to the minister. Then the minister will send it to the prime ministry. Then you end up at the presidency five years. <laughs> Yes. Then somebody inside an yes. air conditioned office somewhere in the big Unity Palace will sign some papers and will start sending the message back down that yes, you can take that latrine. Mindset. Those guys came and took it down methodically so that we'll get to this point so that when you have a problem to solve, you know, you're not allowed to think. You would go yes. and tell that minister that they've appointed from your area and they will tell you that that's your minister. is from... He thinks it's from he, he, right? So it's your Bameda thing. That's yeah. where, if we don't, that's where, because we understand it now, what I'm thinking of is that I'm going to bypass all those people and I'll start working at the mindset level. Design some programs that will make people, that will, that will compensate people for thinking yeah. out of the box. Not compensate in terms of getting a million francs. You're just compensating them by telling their story on YouTube. Yes. That is where influencers come in. That is where you are going to say that, hey, have you heard that this fellow using only bamboo was able to build a bicycle? Oh, really? That small fellow comes from a village out there in the bush called Kubomi. Oh, if it can be done in Bomi, in, in Bengui, then it can be done in Wum. If it can be done in Wum, then it can be done in Manku.